Okay, everyone, I'm here with my impact review for this week, October the 10th, 2013. Starts off with Dixie Carter, and she basically says she never needed Hawk Hogan, but she never mentions Hogan's name. She never needed, uh, she doesn't need Stephanie, Mr. Stephanie Levesque, nor does she need the Jarrett boys. Um, why does TNA persist to beg the WWE, uh, mention WWE to get, like, begs and views. I don't understand that. Sting comes out and wants to know what got into Dixie, and basically, yeah, he just, Dixie wants to know what, who, what afford he had to make the match between him and Magnus at Bound for Glory. So, she then puts him and Magnus in a tag team match, against bad influence. If they lose, they're essentially fired, so yeah. Then we get a back then we get Aries backstage talking about how Jeff Hardy needs Ultimate X and he doesn't leads into Austin Aries Jeff Hardy. Very good match here. Finish comes when Aries hits a brain buster off the top rope, giving Aries the win. Then Samoa Joe puts himself in the Ultimate X match at Bound for Glory. Don't know why Joe would care, but whatever. Uh, then there's a backstage segment with the bromance. And they talk about stuff. I really don't care about the bromance. Uh, yeah, I never have. But, um, leads into ODB versus Jesse. ODB gets one by DQ and Lady Tapa interferes. And basically, the segment ends with Lady Tapa standing over ODB with the Knockouts title. So, yeah. Then we have this Ace and Eight segment, and Nux and Garrett mention that there's only three of them to bully Ray, who, and they're forgetting Taz again, making it utterly pointless as to why Taz is in Ace and the Knights. But, uh, basically, Bully Ray doing what Dixie Hardy had permission to do, puts Nux and Garrett against AJ Styles for main event. Yeah, whoop D. I I don't, yeah. So then we have a mat, then we have the Ego Hall of Fame ceremony with Bobby Roode, Daniels and Gary come out, they're wearing a blue and orange suit for Throwback Thursday, they introduce Bobby Roode, sits in this big throne type thing. Um... And then they show a video for Bobby Roode. And then Bobby Roode thanks Kazarian, Daniels, and himself and asks why Kurt Angle is going into the TA Hall of Fame when it should be him. And as the longest served reigning TNA champion in the country's in the company's history. And all this, that brings out Angle, who suplexes both Daniel and Gazarian, challenges by Rude at Bound for Glory, which Rude later accepts. And we have a match between Angle and Rude, pretty much made on the fly for Bound for Glory. Um, so, then we have Velvet Sky. She's taking on... Um, Brooke, and the winner will advance to face ODB and Gail Kim in a triple threat. At Bound for Glory. Brooke, uh, Saban's doing a lot of Mark Marrow-esque stuff, covering up Velvet and all this stuff. And then, while he's giving a search on what can help Velvet win, Brooke rolls Velvet up, gets the win, even though Brooke's shoulder is up. Even though Velvet's shoulder is up. But So it's ODB versus Gale versus Brooke at Bound for Glory. Yeah. Uh... So then we have Sting and Magnus versus Bad Influence in a not so good match in which Magnus just gets beat on, beat on, beat on. Eventually tags Sting, who then eventually tags Magnus back in. Magnus hits an elbow drop, then he puts a clover leaf on. Um, but that's broken up. Sting tags himself in, gets rid of Daniels. Scorpion spl Stinger splashes Kazarian, Death drops him, gets a win for the team. Magnus is upset about this, so it's obvious that Magnus is going to turn heel when he faces Sting at Bound for Glory. Main event, of course, was AJ Styles versus um, Garrett Bischoff and Nux. This wasn't much. Uh, in fact, it was pathetic. AJ wins with a small package 
I guess that's what it was, but Gary Bischoff, like, botches, I don't know what it was, so I don't really at all know what was, uh, going, what it really was supposed to be about. Yeah. So, yeah. And then Bully Ray beats AJ up with a chain and throws him outside and all that. That's how Impact ends. Show wasn't good, uh, other than the Aries and Hardy match, but... Eh. Um, so, yeah, I'll be back with a, uh, and this, by the way, this whole thing of TNA with these four pay-per-views, it's not working, because they're not taking the time in between pay-per-views to build the next pay-per-view. They've had, since, they've had four months to build up Bound for Glory, I do believe, and they really haven't done it. They really haven't done it as well as they could have, um, other than AJ and Bully Ray, and now a lot of this is about Dixie Carter's heel turn, which should have been a slow heel turn anyway, instead of just a basic carbon copy of what the WWE is doing. Uh, so, I'll be back probably tomorrow with my SmackDown review, so thank you for watching, and bye.